Zoom link that we presented is not functioning at optimum at this time, and so we have put out a message to route, to reroute everyone to the the um, YouTube facility on on both the Mandeville Church and also the Victor Dixon High. So please note that we appreciate your company this afternoon and we expect to have a seamless but wonderful afternoon may I invite the first participants we had originally mrs nicola drummond who is one of our parents but her husband pastor drummond will be doing her part welcome pastor drummond thank you madam principal at this time, I'm going to invite you all to bow your heads and assume the attitude of prayer. Loving Father, we are indeed grateful for journeying mercies to be here. We thank you for this wonderful occasion as we celebrate the achievements of our sons and our daughters. We thank you for their parents through whom they have received life. We thank you for their teachers who have been a beacon, light bearers, molding and fashioning these lives so that today we can celebrate with them. Lord, they have accomplished the second rung of the academic ladder. And many of them will go to different places we ask your divine God to secure their footsteps. We ask you that no weapon formed against them will prosper as you will seek to hide them in the shadow of your wings. We pray, Lord, in pursuit of whatever their goals are, they will remember that their main duty on earth is service to you and to their fellow men. I pray you'll protect them and guard them, guide them and keep them in the hollow palm of your hands. And we pray, dear God, when they come to the end of their earthly pilgrimage, they will be garnered into your everlasting kingdom. We seek your presence to be in this place this afternoon, and that every item that is rendered will bring glory and honor to your name. So right now, again, we ask, May your sweet, holy presence permeate this place, we ask in Jesus' name. Remain standing for the hymn, uh, Immortal, Invisible. The hymn is found in your program. Please take such in your hand and sing along. Immortal, invisible God, only wise. We go after two, one, two. Immortal, invisible God, only wise. Enlightened, accessible, hid from our eyes. Most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, Thy great name we praise On resting, on hasting And silent as light Nor wanting, nor wasting Rulest in might Thy justice like mountain I soaring above The clouds which are fountain of goodness and love to all life to all life thou givest to both great and small in all life thou leavest the true life of all we and flourish like leaves on the then wither and perish but not change its thee 
great father great father of glory pure father of light thine angels adore thee all veil in their sight oh lord we would render oh help us to see tis only the splendor of light May I invite you to, to sit at this time, graduates. Was that your original um, directive? And uh, may I invite the Shakon Foster, Tetra Ennis, and Dustin Johnson to come forward to do the welcome. Thank you. Pastor Michael Henry, Education Director, Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Dr. Vivine Quarry, Vice President, Academic Administration, Northern Caribbean University, and Board Chairman of Victor Dixon High School. Mrs. Orchid Smith, Principal of Victor Dixon High School, and Dr. Joseph Smith. Dr. Dudley Hossin, guest speaker and Mrs. Hossin, Dr. Orlean Brown Earl, President, Home and School Association, and Pastor Earl, members of staff of the Victor Dixon High School, parents, guardians, and well-wishers, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. There are several events in life that merit a round of applause. A plane touches down, a baby is born, an experiment successfully done, a very inspiring speech, and the list goes on and on. What is it that brings joy to these occasions? I will tell you, it is the sense of accomplishment. We have all gathered at another applause ceremony, and we look around at beaming eyes, squared shoulders, flashy proud demeanor, and if those masks were removed, Wide grins and beaming smiles would be revealed in celebration of today's accomplishments. Who are these jubilant persons and our biggest cheerleaders today? Our beloved parents, guardians, and relatives. We acknowledge your encouragement and many sacrifices over the years. Welcome. The board members, administration, and staff of the Vicar Dixon High School. Welcome. You were on our support team all along. Welcome. Welcome. Our special guests, well-wishers, and friends, both present today, and those joining us from the various streaming medias. You could not have, this, have made this occasion more special. Welcome. Welcome. The graduating class of 2021 and other students of our school, you are indeed lifelong friends. Welcome. welcome. To, all, to all, we say, say welcome, welcome to our graduation, graduation ceremony, 2021. 2021. We are happy that you are here. Welcome. Madam Principal, and chair of this afternoon's program. Members of the Board of Governors, members of staff and members of the Academic Council of Victor Dixon High School. 
Distinguished guests present right here or joining us online, parents, well-wishers, and friends, ladies and gentlemen, and especially members of the graduating class of 2021. What an exciting time to be living in. And what an exciting theme you people have chosen. Exciting and creative, and thus representative of the persons who are sitting before me today. It seems like less than four decades ago that I sat where you sat, where you sit now. But the fact is that education, the academic stimulation, the development of character that took place in those days when I was a student of this institution still goes on today. And so, permit me, on behalf of the president, the administration, and the members of the worker family of Jamaica Union, the education and heartiest congratulations on this very special day. Madam Principal and staff, we all know that this has been a year fraught with unprecedented challenges. And yet, look at what is happening here. As I look at these graduates sitting here, as I look at the awards laid out there, as I look at the parents sitting proudly and, and being a part of what is happening, if it were not that I had 47 sophisticated and uh, educated members of the graduating class sitting in front of me, I would have to say, boy, graduation turn up. But since you are sitting here out of respect for you, I will perhaps have to say, this is a fantastic and wonderful evening. Whatever way we say it, this is something to be celebrated, and I am proud and happy to be a part of this celebration. I know the members of staff here are giving a, a sigh of satisfaction as they have come to the end of another school year, and as they look with pride as the products in front of them. But members of staff, you don't have much time to sigh or to sit and enjoy the young persons out there waiting for this taste of success. They're in a different place from when you came into this institution. And the path and the routes to success are completely different. You are graduating at a time that is fraught with all kinds of new challenges. But I know that you have the kind of education that equips you to meet these challenges, a Christian education. And so to, to reshape the dynamics in the social sciences and to guide all to our loving Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Imagine where you want to be. Imagine yourself writing songs when you sing. Imagine yourself when you make, watch movies, that you are making those movies. Imagine yourselves when you're driving cars very, very soon, some of you already. Imagine yourself designing newer and better cars. Yes, Google it and remember to plan, to save, and to help others along the way. God will give you the intellectual capacity to achieve if you believe. Obedience to the laws of your maker will help you always remember the Ten Commandments. Optimism is the path that will keep you focused. Grace, God's grace that will keep you faithful. Love everyone you meet, respect them and guide them to Christ. Endurance, remember, endurance is the path to victory.
very much singers from the junior class group. At this time, we will be having the year in review. It will be shown on the screen. And uh, what a year we had this school year. One of the longest years we've had in history. And last year, this time, we had a mixed modality graduation. And I remember Dr. Cameron, you were the chair man at that time. We were at a different location and we had expected that come this graduation, everything would be back to normal. As a matter of fact, we thought that September 2020, we would be back to normal school. But it didn't happen that way. And we are here today. We have overcome many obstacles. We have been victorious. And if we were in another place, I would celebrate in a very ecstatic way the victory of Hansel Parchment earlier this morning in the 110 meter hurdles. What a victory that was this morning. And what a victory for those of you who are graduating and also you parents and guardians who have stood by to give support. So at this time, please enjoy the short year in review. Thank you. Greetings. The Victor Dixon High School Board of Governors, administration, staff, parents, and students. I am delighted to be able to bring you a brief report of the activities and achievements of the Victor Dixon High School over the last school year. And what a year it has been. COVID-19 and the pandemic have been chief words in our vocabulary since March 2020 and led out in planning activities to enrich our spiritual walk with Christ. Activities such as the text of the week memorization, students participating in general devotions, Moments with Jesus, week of prayer led by students, after school Bible study, and baptism. The Victor Dixon High School has an admirable record of student achievement and success. The school continues to see approximately 80% or more of its graduates earning five or more CSEC subjects, while many are earning between nine and 11 subjects, therefore qualifying them to enter any tertiary institution of their choice. Last year's top performing students include Radhika Henry, 10 subjects, Nia Adonis, tokens and enjoyed numerous photo opportunities. In view of the many challenges faced by our students and our teachers in securing computers and tablets, a drive was launched to secure devices. Partners such as Mrs. Avery Thompson, Mr. Alfred Thomas from Pioneer Manufacturing Company, Pastor Nigel Lewis and friends, Mr. Dave Myrie, Mrs. Claudia, Food, Nutrition and Health Department, students produced elegantly styled dishes. Student empowerment was conducted by the Dean of Discipline on the internet protocols titled Netiquette. The Guidance Department arranged parents Professional Development Days were also held for our teacher Owen Roberts Lecture Series and STEM Awards, which featured Dr. Joanne Roberts, 
coordinator of the University of California Center of Education, Innovation and Learning in Science. Students who excelled in the STEM subjects were given recognition and were challenged to hold themselves to higher levels of performance. A series of home and school association meetings were held throughout the school year, keeping the communication lines open. Special thanks to our PTA president, Dr. Orlean Brown Earl, and a team of committed parents who were always giving support. And Teacher's Day, May 2021, was not forgotten. All our staff members got gifts and gift bags. Thank you, PTA personnel. Big sale in aid of procuring webcams for the Information Technology Department. The officers of the society presented those webcams to the principal. Sadly, we lost Mrs. Ellen Jones, our retired mathematics teacher who continued to help students in mathematics. Sorrowfully, several other students lost a parent this year, and we joined in praying for God's sustenance on them and their families. Currently, the project to acquire technological equipment is still open because we need all our teachers and all our students to own their own devices and also become technologically competent in this era. We are also constructing a water storage tank to harvest rainwater. The coronavirus pandemic has spotlighted the need for brave, courageous leadership. According to Brené Brown, easy learning does not build strong skills. Each student must vow to be courageous and brave as they face the future through Christ's strength and march on to greater achievement. Much appreciation to our teachers and our staff for their tireless efforts and dedicated service. Please accept my deepest thanks to our beloved parents and supporters. Muchas gracias. Also thanks a million to my family. May God's grace sustain and protect the Victor Dixon High School and our country Jamaica land we love. Well, we're making progress and we are doing well. And at this time, we are going to be preparing for our guest speaker. Our guest speaker this afternoon is Dr. Dudley Hossin. He served as our chaplain for the Parent Teachers Association and he did a very faithful duty this year. He attended the Friendship All Aid School in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, where he passed the common entrance and earned a place at the Woolmers Boys School in Kingston. After completing high school, he worked in the areas of inventory control and internal auditing while pursuing studies at the University of Technology. He later enrolled at Northern Caribbean University where he graduated with an associate degree in information science and a bachelor's degree in religion. 
is also a graduate of the Inter-American Adventist Theological Seminary with a master's degree and a doctor of ministry degree with emphasis in comprehensive health ministry. He has been a minister of the Seventh-day Adventist Church for almost 25 years, where he has served two local conferences as pastor and uh, departmental director. He currently serves as health and publishing ministries director, prayer and men's ministries coordinator for the Jamaica Union Conference. He is a passionate literature evangelist and uh, a, a literature evangelist club was launched at our school pre-COVID and uh, Pastor, we welcome you to reintroduce it when COVID is um, history. He has had the privilege to conduct numerous revivals resulting in lives being transformed all over the world, Jamaica, the US, the UK, Car and the Caribbean and Africa. His personal philosophy is, if you want to stand tall spiritually, you must first learn to kneel, and lots of kneeling helps you to be in good standing. He's also the co-host of the radio program, Prayer Power Connection, aired on NCU Radio. He's married to the former Katrina Jackson, an educator and guidance counselor. She is on the platform to my left there. Welcome. Mrs. Hosin, and their union has produced one daughter, Carrie. Carrie is there also, student, former graduate of, graduate of the Victor Dixon High School. Now, two sons, David. David is a part of our graduation class this year, and we have Joel to come to orientation in September <laughs> for first form. We welcome you, Dr. Hossin, very strong supporter of Seventh-day Adventist Christian Education, supporter of our school, and we welcome you to give the charge to the graduates this afternoon. Thank you very much. Amen. Mrs. Orchid Smith, Principal Victor Dixon High School, members of the Board of Governors, parents and guardians, family members and relatives, friends and well-wishers, special guests, distinguished guests, class of 2021, graduates, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm very happy to be here to share in the joy of this momentous occasion. Graduation is a big achievement, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. All right, very good. So class of 2021, I celebrate with you. This is not just a major event, but a transition point for you. You're moving to the next phase in your life. You have completed the secondary phase and you're moving to the next phase, pressing on the upward way in your journey. The Chinese proverbs say that a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And I see that you're stepping on, you're pressing on the upward way and you're gaining new heights every day. So, graduates, class of 2021, take pride that you have met the requirements for graduation. You made it despite the challenges of the pandemic. You made it despite the new norm of teaching and learning. I believe, even though we're here at Mandeville Seventh-day Adventist Church, we can celebrate. You could have dropped out, but you have stopped the gun. You could have given up, but you exhibit resilience. You're here today because 
you somehow embrace the creative acronym Google. Today is a day of celebration, not only for the students, but for us as parents and guardians. Parents and guardians, it's time for you to celebrate your hard work. You sacrifice a lot. I'm speaking from experience. Parents and guardians, it is time to celebrate the accomplishment of your children. Today I celebrate the accomplishment of my son. I remember when he was born, I was in the room, saw him there coming out, and I just praise God that today I have this privilege to be here to celebrate with him as he moves to a next phase. School administrators and teachers, it is time to celebrate Mrs. Smith. It is time to celebrate the fruits of your labor. You have worked hard and have seen you time and time again, despite the challenges of the pandemic. We are living in unprecedented time. And praise God that the administrators and the teachers, the staff and the other workers, you have done your part, you ensured that we are here today. So we celebrate with you. And I want you all, graduates, to put your hands together for our parents, for the school administrators, the teachers, the workers, and also yourself. So put your hands together for all these folks that we have mentioned. You know, I reflected. I reflected a little bit. I remembered when I came to Northern Caribbean University, then West Indies College, and I met my girlfriend. Then, now my wife, we're from two different parishes, and uh, we met, and God gave us three children. We thank God for that. And I reflected, you know, we didn't know what would happen, what they would look like. God has been very good. And back then she wrote me a note, which I want to share with you because she made me feel special. Do you feel that you're special today? If you feel that you're special, I want you to put your together for yourself. Come on now. She sent me a note. Do you want to hear it? You want to know my business? That's all right. <laughs> she wrote me a note. I lost my mother before I completed my degree. She wrote me something to encourage me. She wrote in a card. She said, God made the rivers and God made the lakes. God made Dudley, and that was not a mistake. And today I want to tell you that, that God made the rivers and God made the lakes and God made you graduates. And that was not a mistake. God knew you before you were born. He has a plan for your life. The text says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. To give you hope and a future. So God is here with you today. I like the theme. I like the theme. Very creative. All things are possible with Google. The word Google is not just the name of the uh, American multinational technology company that specializes in internet-related services. It is not just a search engine based on what we are seeing right here now, ladies and gentlemen, graduates. It is an acronym for success. What did I say? An acronym for what? Success. All right. I want you to just, 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 just say that with me. It is an acronym for what? Success. All right. Very good. So all things are possible with Google. So my topic today, the Google-driven life. So I want you, friends, I want you to big up Google. Big up Google as how you big up Instagram. Come on now. Big up Google as how you big up TikTok and Twitter and Snapchat. Recently I joined Snapchat and I realized that some of, 
Some folks like myself in my age group are on Snapchat. I thought that I would just see the younger ones because I hear the folks saying that WhatsApp and Facebook are for the older folks. But of course, we need to spend less time on these social media platforms. Spend less time in Facebook and more time in God's book. So today, I would like to talk with you. Can we talk today? If we can talk today, raise your hand. Come on now. All right, we can talk today. Isn't that so? All right, so, so the question I would like to ask you, what is the, the driving force in your life? Are you living the Google-driven life? Are you living a life that is empowered by Google? Are you living that life that is empowered by godliness, obedience, optimism, grace, love? What drives you? What are you thinking right now? Of course, many of you are thinking, I can't wait for the program to be completed, that I can go home and go to a place to dine with my family. You're anxiously waiting your diploma. You're anxiously awaiting your award. But I want to talk with you for a brief moment. The Google-driven life. The verb drive, many dictionary defines as to guide, to control, or to direct. And the question here what is guiding you? What is controlling your thoughts? What gives you direction and inspiration and motivation in life? Is it materialism? Is it that you just want to please your parents because they say you must do well, you must graduate? Or is it that you want to fulfill God's will for your life. Everyone is driven by something. Everyone, friends. There's some force behind you. A car is driven by its engine. Are you with me? All right. And, uh, you know, as I thought about the theme and I saw Elaine Thompson era, this lady, I admire her very much. I admire her very much. She's the fastest woman alive today and in so much I said to myself what if I had an interview with her so I had an imaginary interview with Elaine I introduced myself to her I in my imagination I, 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 I was just being creative like the administrators and the team that came up with the theme so I put on my casual clothes and I said I'm going to banana grounds where she's from and, you know, of course, uh, she lives elsewhere, but I wanted to be where she's from because I wanted to know what gave her success because she did so well. She got double-double. You know that, the 100 meter, 200 meters. She did very well. She made us proud, just like Ansel Parchment, Sister Orchid. And understand, friends, I spoke to her and asked her, what drives you, Elaine, in my imagination? And she told me the things that drive her. And understand, when I look at it, friends, in my imagination, I realize that it is in line with the theme, all things are possible with Google. I realize that in my imagination, don't get me wrong, in my imagination, sometimes it's good to think and picture yourself doing some things. She shared her story. And one of the things I wanted to find out, like Usain Bolt, he will tell you that it is a yellow yam that gave him strength. And as I read articles about her, I realized that she too loves yellow yam. She too loves ackee and sulfur. She too loves to eat well because she studied food and nutrition at the University of Technology. But friends, in my imagination, 
I came back and I shared my story with her and I shared that I struggled with this Google thing, this Google theme. And because of that imaginary interview today, I'm excited to, to talk to you about how you can be successful and accomplish everything through Google. I must confess that I didn't follow the Google as I should, even while I was in high school. It wasn't until I came to West Indies College. I thank God for Christian education. I was going to the University of Technology, then cast in the evening. I heard about West Indies College. I heard about Northern Caribbean University. Of course, it was West Indies College, and I wanted to get Christian education. Graduates, you're fortunate because Christian education is holistic. It caters to the whole man. It wasn't until I came to Northern Caribbean University that I, that I could embrace the Google acronym. And praise God, my life took off for the better. I began to rise higher and catch a fire. I start at the bottom. You know, somebody says that only grave diggers start at the top. So wherever you are, you just press on. You start higher and you catch a fire, the preacher says. So understand, I, I want to share with you my story as I shared with, as I, as how I shared it with Elaine during that imaginary interview. I came to West Indies College back then, Northern Caribbean University, and somehow, somehow, you know, I, I, I came in a closer relationship with Jesus Christ. If you notice there, uh, the first G in Google is godliness. That's the acronym, godliness. I embrace godliness, and in order for you to embrace godliness, you must know God. The Bible says, in the beginning, God. So in order for you to exhibit godliness, you must come in contact with God. So I came in a closer relationship with God. And because of that, my worldview was changed. And like Elaine, I did, I had what? My personal best. And as a result, I began to think differently. And understand, friends, in order for you to exhibit godliness you must take time to be with god because we were made in god's image and we can't experience holistic development until we come in contact with god and press on the upward way and gain new rights every day so it is important for you to remember that godliness is not optional but an absolute necessity it is not optional. It is important for you to connect with God. You know, the divine biblical commentator, Ellen G. White, says, higher than the highest human thoughts can reach. You know that quotation. is God's ideal for his children. Godliness, godlikeness, is the goal to be reached. So it is important for you to embrace godliness. And after godliness comes obedience and I must confess that I struggled with that struggle with that to follow through with God's commandments to follow through but it wasn't until I surrendered all to Jesus and began to embrace obedience to all of his laws and as I look at the life of Elaine Thompson era I realized that somehow she embraces the laws of life she eats well she thinks well you know the popular song says that your thinking and your thoughts will make you wiser and make you smart so you need to begin to think well and exhibit godliness and understand uh, that obedience is the fruit of godliness you demonstrate godliness by obedience and as you obey god you will find that the blessings of god will flow more and you'll realize that you will do better you know the saying says good better best never let it rest until you're good and you're better be best so so understand now understand now as i began to embrace this acronym even before it was created by our noble administrators and the graduation team as I embraced that, I realized that my grades began 
to move one step higher. I no longer fail, and I must confess, you know, uh, that, that in life that you will have some failures. And failure is never final, success is never ending. And I must tell you, for those of you who are waiting your CSEC results, don't be overly anxious. If you fail, you can, uh, you can resit. I remembered because I didn't embrace the Google acronym. I failed math and English. I thought I would have passed math at least. You know, I failed those two subjects, very vital. And, and because, you know, I wasn't so obedient, I wanted a shortcut, you know. I switched from CXC back then to GCE and I went back and I went and I sat that exam and guess what I got? I got a D and an E. And the D did not mean doing fine, and the E didn't mean excellent, it was a failure. But praise God, I went back to the CXC syllabus, and in a few months' time, I sat the GCE in June, and the January I sat the CXC, and praise God, I went back, and I got two grade twos, praise God, for that. So understand that you will fail sometime, even as you embrace godliness, because failure is never final and success is never ending. And sometimes it is when you fail, you begin uh, to do better. You begin to spend more time studying because God does the work in a vacuum. We have some students who want the ones and the twos and they don't want to study. God doesn't work in a vacuum. You have to put in the time you have to study to show yourself approve unto God. So understand now that godliness is very important. The opposite of godliness is wordliness. Don't follow the crowd. Rick Warren says, those who follow the crowd usually get lost in, in it. Don't follow the crowd. Don't follow those popular artists. There are a number of them today that some of our young people are following. Intense. Squash and all those folks. Uh, don't follow them. Follow uh, God. God is the one who created you. You didn't create yourself. And he has a plan for your life. And he will do great things for you. You know what? Uh, the Apostle Paul says to Timothy in 1 Timothy 6, 6 to 11. He says, godliness with contentment is great gain. So as you seek to move to the other phase of your life, you need to understand that godliness with contentment. And if you were to read the passage, you will hear Paul saying, for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out and having food and clothing, with these shall we be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare. It's okay to live comfortable and to occupy until Jesus comes. And of course, to, to have some wealth but if your mind is focused if your passion is to be rich and you're doing that particular course of study because you want more money and maybe you you want some honey understand you might be disappointed because the bible says the love of money is the root of all evil for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness the world is filled with folks who are greedy but don't be greedy. If you're needy, don't be greedy. Because God says, I will supply all your needs according to your riches and glory. So true success should not be measured by material possession, wealth, or fame. The billionaire Richard Branson, his definition of success has nothing to do with money. And understand, he earned his first million at the early age of 23, Dr. Smith. And understand, he says, too many people measure how successful they are by how much money they make or the people they associate with. He says, in my opinion, true success should be measured by how happy you are. Graduates, are you happy? Today I'm very happy. And when I went to West Indies College back then, I went to do information science. Because I, you know, back then the computer was just coming in and my motives were wrong back then because I wanted to do something, not to fulfill God's will, but because I grew up 
poor. I, I, I went to school. I, I'm telling my son, look, man, you're getting good money for lunch money because I, I went to school in Kingston. I lived in Spanish and I went to school, sometimes leaving home, no bus fare. Come on now. My father died when I was in fourth form, just about 15 or so. He died. So my life went down just like that. But I had ambition. I had a praying mother. And understand, you know, I wanted a career. I wanted to be a chartered accountant. I, I, I wanted, uh, you know, to be a computer analyst and mix that with accounting. I wanted all of that. So I began to study in that area. But after I embraced a godliness in its entirety, I realized that God has some other plan for my life. Are you following God's plan for your life, graduates? Are you following His will for your life? Are you planning to study medical technology because you want a good job and you want to have lots of money? Are you planning to study business administration because you want to own your business and you want to be wealthy and you just want to sit back and relax and fall asleep sometimes? If that's your motive, it is wrong. You should have a passion to do what God wants you to do. So I must confess, when I was there in high school, at your age, I wasn't so sure what I wanted. But praise God, today I'm happy that I made that choice to walk in the path that God has for me. So obedience is very important as we move from godliness. And obedience demonstrates our faith and trust in God. And as you continue to trust God, I guarantee that God will provide. God will take care of your needs. I don't want to preach to you. I'm just telling you that what God did for me, he will do for you. I came to school. Praise God, they, they fired me when I was working 18 months at that place where I used to work. They told me that, look, look, we are laying you off. You see, they wanted me to work on a day that I worship, the Sabbath. And I said, no, no. And they said, look, we find it fit to lay you off. But I got fired. But it was a blessing in disguise. I, I, I was disappointed because it was a good job. It was a good job. But I wanted to go to West Indies College. I wanted Christian education. But God did that to place me at West Indies College. I had a down payment to start school. A down payment. Just a down payment. In fact, when I packed my grip, back then we had grip. Now you have suitcases, grips. And my grandmother gave me one they called Dulcimina. Have mercy. You don't know about that. But understand now, and I came, my mother told me that, you know, I will not be able to assist you. But because of my relationship with Jesus Christ. I realized that God would provide. So I got enrolled to be a literature evangelist and the rest is history. I canvassed my way through college, paid my tuition fees, graduated with two degrees at the end of it all. I went to the business manager and I could say, Jesus paid it all. If we were at church, I would say, can I get a witness? And today I'm here because I followed God's will for my life. I obeyed God. And I'm not saying that I did it perfectly. But praise God all the way my Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercies? Who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, the songwriter says. Divinest comfort. Here by faith in him to dwell. For I know what you're before me. Jesus do it all things well. So that I, as I wind down. Optimism is very, very important. It's very important. Being optimistic goes deeper than merely positive thinking. So as you embrace the Google concept, as you seek to live the Google-driven life, it's not just no, but you need to make it a permanent fixture in your life. Understand that you need to be optimistic. Being optimistic goes way deeper than merely positive thinking. Optimistic people invest, act, and place effort to achieve whatever they want to. High optimism can predict serious attempts and success. Optimism leads to creativity and the generation of new concepts. So you need to look at the glass half full instead of half empty. Some of you graduates here are negative, but you need to be positive and begin to think. You see, your mind is very powerful. The brain that God has given to you, the frontal lobe, very powerful. So as you begin to put your mind to what you want to do, as the Lord leads, understand that he will do great things for you. And as you're optimistic and you're, you're happy, uh, the wise man says, a merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit 
dries up the bones. Nelson Mandela, the former president of South Africa, says, be optimistic. Be optimistic. He says, I'm fundamentally an optimist. Part of being optimistic is keeping one's head pointed towards the sun, one's feet moving forward. There were many dark moments, he says, when my faith in humanity was sorely tested, but I would not and could not give up myself to despair. That way lays, that way lays defeat and death. He says that everyone can rise above their circumstances and achieve success if they are dedicated to and passionate about what they want to do. As I listen to, 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 to Elaine Thompson era from humble beginnings, she was not a promising student in athletics, but our coach, Francis, he saw something in her and he nurtured her, he inspired her and he, he, he empowered her and he reminded her that she must be optimistic and that a quitter never wins and a winner never quits and he told her that you can make it if you can conceive it you will achieve it so 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 she was optimistic and she experienced god's grace and we need god's grace at all times god's unmerited favor and i'm here today because of god's grace by the grace of god i am what i am I couldn't believe it when I graduated from college with my degree. I couldn't believe it when I went higher. I couldn't believe it, but God did it. And I still want some more because I'm not satisfied because something down deep inside of me is telling me that I need to study some more to be of more benefit to humanity. So today, as I close, remember love is important. Love, you have to love, don't be selfish. Don't be selfish, you want to make the honor roll. You want everything. You want the good grades. You want everything. You want all the prizes. Don't be selfish. Share. No one is an island. No one stands alone. You need to be your brother's keeper. Of course, it's important. Are you sharing and caring for your brother, your classmates? Take that attitude of caring and sharing. And you must connect with God, get his love, and give love. He that love it not, know it not God, because God is love. God is love. The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. But you can't give love unless you have love. You can't give what you don't have. I can't give you a thousand dollars today. But if you come Monday and you need it, I'll give you a thousand Jamaican dollars. So give love. Love all. Trust a few. Do wrong to none. Life is the flower for which love is the honey. All you need is love. True love stories never ends. Mother Teresa, she says, the greatest disease is not TB or leprosy. It is being unwanted, unloved, uncared for. We can cure physical diseases with medicine, but the only cure for loneliness, despair, and hopelessness is love. There are many people who need love and pledge that whatever career you take up, whatever path you tread on, in the next phase, be sure that you embrace love and that you endure unto the end. Endurance is crucial. And as you endure, you will see the fruits of your labor. Endure. God has a plan for you. You can be effect effective as you endure. If you think you are too young to be effective, one writer says, you have never been in, in bed with a mosquito. If you think you're too young to be effective, you have never been in bed with a mosquito. So as I close now, God wants you to embrace Google. Godliness, obedience, optimism. Optimism, be excited. Embrace his grace, love your neighbor as yourself. Endure, endurance is needed. You need to work hard. The heights of great men, reach and kept, were not attained by sudden flight. But while their companions slept, they were toiling upward in the night. So work hard. And of course, work smart. God will do great things for you. You'll move to the next level. And I will come to your graduation when you graduate with a bachelor's degree in business administration, in computer information system, in medical technology. When you graduate with your medical degree, with your doctor of dental surgery degree, I will come to that event. May God bless you.
May you have a powerful, productive, and profitable evening and year in Jesus' name. On behalf of the school administration, graduates, parents, and guardians, we would like to say thank you for sharing with us that we should keep on trusting God and that we should never give up, never give up. And so we'd like to say thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Hossin, and also students. At this time, I invite our board chair, Dr. Vivian Quarry, to bring her greetings. Thank you. Principal of the Victor Dixon High School, Mrs. Orchid Smith, Director of Education of the Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh day Adventists, Pastor Michael Henry, President of the Home and School Association, Dr. Orlean Brown Earl, our keynote speaker, Dr. Dudley Hossein former chairman of the board of directors of the Victor Dixon High School, Dr. Beverly Cameron, distinguished teachers, distinguished parents, distinguished students, and distinguished graduates. Good afternoon. On behalf of the president of Northern Caribbean University, as well as on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Victor Dixon High School. I welcome you all to the 2021 graduation ceremony and congratulate our graduates on their achievements of this important milestone. The selected theme, all things are possible with godly obedience, optimism, grace, love and endurance. Google is a reflection not only of the creative genius of our graduates engendered by their teachers in this, the Victor Dixon High School, established by God for the purpose of cultivating a culture of excellence, but is also reflective of the experiences that you all have had, that you all have faced during the COVID-19 pandemic as the education systems of the world sought to use Google and the other advancements in technology as solutions to our educational challenges, as well as of the values that are continuously taught as our students are prepared for service here and in the hereafter. This is indeed the ultimate goal of Seventh-day Adventist Christian education. The purpose of our unique brand of education, so clearly articulated in the book, as well as in today's theme, is indicated by Ellen Gold Harmon White in the book Education, on pages 15 and 16. And she says, to restore in man the image of the maker, to bring him back to the perfection in which he was created, to promote the development of body, mind, and soul, that the divine purpose in his creation might be realized, this was to be the work 
of redemption. This is the object of education, the great object of life. We who support this laboratory school of Northern Caribbean University concur with this statement which suggests that if we are to cultivate the fruit of the Spirit indicated in Galatians 5 verses 22 and 23, then Seventh-day Adventist Christian education is of critical importance to this process. The members of the board of directors of the Victor Dixon High School use this opportunity to celebrate with you the members of the August 2021 graduating class, along with the administration, faculty, staff, and the student body. We thank you, the graduates, as well as your parents, guardians, sponsors, and stakeholders for having chosen this school, which is among more than 27 Seventh-day Adventist schools in Jamaica, among more than 790 in the Inter-American Division of Seventh-day Adventists, and among more than 7,800 in the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. And pray that the church, the home, and the school will continue to work collaboratively to mold the characters of our children for service on this earth in preparation for their entry into God's everlasting kingdom. Congratulations, and may God continue to bless you. Before I start, I would just like to say congrats to the graduates and may God be with you as you progress to a higher level of education. We knew it was one in a million It was such a long shot But somehow we got here together And who knows what will happen Anything can happen But we keep getting better And we keep on believing When you put your heart in it It can take you anywhere Who's to say that we can't make it it's the same dream that we share When you put your heart in it It can take you anywhere This road was so long and winding But we could 
couldn't stop once we had started and we were always getting closer suddenly it's happened a chance in a lifetime and we're gonna take it we can make it and when you Put your heart in it It can take you anywhere And who's to say that We can't make it Cause it's the same dream that we share Keep on believing to say that we can't make it cause it's the same dream that we share when you put your heart in it it can take you How can, can we, we say, say thanks, thanks for all, all the things, things you have done, done for us? Things so undeserved that you did and gave. Because you were getting paid, teachers? No. For you gave too much, you went too far, and you cared too deeply. How well you dealt with our grudges, or resentments, our frustrations and disappointments, our anger and our depression. You seem to have seen beyond those, and seen us as children who are unconfident, ignorant, and vulnerable. Yet you saw that we needed all the help that you so willingly gave. How can we say thanks for all the dash hopes, ambitions, plans, and to-do lists that were never realized because you were too busy with? The annual parade of fresh faces, the noises of chattering children, shuffling feet, lesson plans, staff meetings, parent conferences, and schoolhouse politics just to name a few. And yet, our successes became your significance, your competence, or character. Your every act of dedication, passion, and example that enriched, empowered, and enlarged our young minds are all deeds for which a simple thank you is woefully inadequate. And yet, dear teacher, it is all that we have to give, 
along with the prayer that God will bless the fruit of your circumstance, of your choices. Because we here all know that being a teacher is never ever just being a teacher. And that by choosing to teach, you chose to live a life that truly matters most. The, the class, class of 2021, 2021 thanks, thanks to the amazing, amazing teachers of the Victor Dixon, Dixon High School. School. Parenting is the biggest sacrifice one can make. It is putting a hold on your lives to fulfill the promise of your children's tomorrow. Today, we humbly thank and celebrate our first teachers, parents, and guardians. The coronavirus crisis upended our lives, and you were required to step in and provide encouragement, guidance, expertise, and the means necessary to continue our studies online. This was just the latest in a lifetime of sacrificial giving. Time would not allow us to enumerate all that you have done for us. The truth is, we really can't count the many fantastic things you have done for us, even if we had time or don't know how. It is really a universal truth. A parent's love comes, comes in its purest form. It is sacrificial, bountiful, unconditional, and consistently constant. So as we celebrate this achievement, the biggest reward for us is having you here with us. You have been and always will be a major driving force behind all our accomplishments and dreams realized today. Therefore, moms and dads, guardians, thank you for everything. Thank you for the sacrifices that you've had to make in order to get me through school. Thank you for all the self-denials that you've made for us and for all the love you've given us throughout our lives. Parents, we thank you for your loyalty, your dedication, and your faith in our ability to have made it this far. Hats off to you, and may God cause your success to be great as you live by his will. Most of all, thank you for being wonderful people. We would like to take this time to show our appreciation to the members of the administration, registrar's office, and support staff. To our administrators, we would like to thank every one of you for your support, especially Mrs. Smith, our principal, who never gave up on us and showed us that we are more than we think. It's always an amazing feeling to enter on the campus and to be greeted firstly by the friendly face of our principal's assistant, Mrs. Brown. We acknowledge your kind service and timely guidance at times. We would also like to recognize Mr. Lawrence and the members of his team for letting us know when we are falling short and need to be brought to the books. Mrs. Senior, Ms. Brooks, and the other workers in the Register's Office, commendation to you 
you have done well. Mrs. Law, Ms. Miller, and Chef Stewart, who left us recently, yours was the awesome task of preparing veggie food deliciously. I believe the long lines at the talk shop every afternoon evidence your success. Mrs. Simo, Ms. Thompson, and Mrs. Swaby, it takes very special people to be as devoted to duty as you are. Thank you for your kindness and diligence. Thank you all for having been a pillar of support to the institution and in particular the members of the 2021 graduating class. Good afternoon all. Mrs. Smith, our principal, could you kindly join me on the podium? Madam Principal, it gives me great pleasure to present 47 students who have completed the requirements for graduation at Victor Dixon High School. Graduates, please rise. As your names are called, we invite you to ascend the platform on my left, your right, and you will receive your certificates, your trophies, other awards that you have merited. Please remain standing until you are instructed or you have practiced to do so. Members of the audience, we're kindly asking you all to hold your applause until all the graduates have been awarded and until they have returned to their seats. We ask the other members of the platform to stand they will be joining in congratulating these graduates. We will now turn over to Mr. Newman as he presents the first set of graduates. They are as follows. Sabrina Bennett. Gabrielle Blair. Gabrielle has received an award for outstanding performance in physical education. As she makes her way up to the form, she is followed by Orain Blair. Orain has done outstanding work in electronic document preparation and management.
Rain is moving forward to be followed by Carl Bramwell. Carl Bramwell has performed well in human and social biology, electronic document preparation and management, and English language, city and guilds. Following behind Bramwell, we have Q, Q. Kenny. Q. Kenny has done well in physical education. Now we have Romario Brown. Romario has done outstanding work in electronic document preparation management. Brianna Bryan. Brianna has done outstanding work in physical education and principles of business. Brianna has a distinction. Excuse me, credit. Adriel Campbell, credit. Adriel has done outstanding work in English literature, geography, family resource management, and chemistry. Adriel Campbell. Shade, Shade Campbell. Shade is receiving an award for deportment. Kevon Chana. Kevon has done outstanding work in principles of accounts.
Ashanti Kuli. Is followed by Sharissa Daly. Sharissa has done outstanding work in physical education. Carisse Drummond, credit. Carisse has done outstanding work in chemistry, physics, principles of business, mathematics, English literature, and family resource management. Ricardo Dunkley. Now we have Anna Earl, credit. Anna has done outstanding work in geography, technical drawing, and citizenship in the area of extracurricular activities. Anna Earl. Shaquan Foster. Shaquan has done outstanding work in integrated science. Gabriel Gale. Gabriel has done outstanding work in integrated science and mathematics, city and guilds. Jaiv Gill.
Jahiv is followed by Rajay Gale. Now we have Lebron Gordon. Lebron has done outstanding work in Bible. Lebron Gordon. Jabari Graham. Howard Henry. Howard is not here, but he has received an outstanding award in physical education. Howard is followed by Lashana Higgins. Lashana has done outstanding work in principles of accounts. Calicia Holness. Calicia has done outstanding work in food, nutrition, and health. We now have David Hossein. David has done outstanding work in Bible, physical education, principles of accounts, and mathematics, city and guilds. David Hossein. Tetra Hinnis. Tetra has done outstanding work in food, nutrition, and health. Dustin Johnson. Dustin Credit. has done outstanding work in physics, principles of business, mathematics, and technical drawing. Credit. Abigail Law. Abigail has done outstanding work in family resource management, social studies, and deportment. And Bianca Lewis. Bianca has done outstanding work in office administration and food, nutrition, and health.
Priyanka. Keanu Lewis. Nashika Lewis. Nashika has done well in social studies. Christopher Levy. Christopher has done outstanding work in agricultural science, electronic document preparation management, and mathematics city and guilds. Christopher Levy. Sanjay Maxwell. Rojane Miller. Rojane has done very well in biology, chemist, chemistry, English language, geography, information technology, Bible, and Christian leadership and technical drawing. Rojane Miller. Shawanda Peter. Shawanda has received or will receive an award for outstanding work in electronic document preparation management, office administration, and social studies. Shawanda Peter.
Kivana Reynolds. Kivana has done outstanding work in social studies. Ashanti Royal. Ashanti has done well in human and social biology, history, food, nutrition, and health, social studies, and citizenship extracurricular activities. She's a silver medalist in the 4-H club competition. Ashanti Royal. Wanye Simpson. Wanye has done outstanding work in electronic document preparation management and physical education. Wanye Simpson. Jordan Somers, credit. Jordan has done well in biology, technical drawing, and English literature. Jordan Somers. Credit. Academic credit. Um, Shamor Sparks. Shamor has done well in office administration. Shamor Sparks. Javon Suki. Javon has done outstanding work in mathematics, city, and guilds. Antonio Thomas. Malik Thompson, distinction. Malik has done very well in English language, social studies, technical drawing, Spanish, and information technology. <laughs> Malik is followed by Kristen Tomlin. Kristen has done well in English language, city and guilds.
Christopher Williams. Christopher has done well in electronic document preparation management. Donnie's Williams. Donnie's is receiving an award for deportment. And Kamarley Wilson. I invite a round of applause for these Victor Dixon High School achievers. Thank you. May I at this time invite Dr. Cameron to the platform. Last year at this time, Dr. Cameron was our school board chairman, a role she took very seriously. And we are so delighted that this year we can show our appreciation by honoring her this afternoon. The movie, The Beautiful Mind, highlights the timeless, inconceivable zenith that a man can reach. This afternoon, we have in person Dr. Beverly Cameron, not just outward beauty, but a person with a beautiful mind. Dr. Beverly Cameron helped to raise the standard of excellence at the Victor Dixon High School, where she served as board chair on two different occasions, August 2009 to June 2010, 
and September 2017 to September 2020. She led us through two separate successful accreditation periods. She stood up for the school, and at this point I must say she is a past student of the West Indies College High School, now Victor Dixon High, and a proud product sample of our institution. May I invite for her a round of applause at this time? Thank you, Dr. Cameron, for your indomitable spirit and service to the institution. We have planned an event for you, but because of the COVID pandemic and the uncertainties, but as soon as some more certainty arrives, we will inform you. But we wanted this occasion to be special, and so we want to gift you with a beautiful plaque this afternoon. The plaque reads, and I want to invite our, thank you, Dr. Quarry, Victor Dixon High School, award of affirmation and appreciation presented to Dr. Beverly Cameron, Board Chairman, August 2009 to June 2010, and September 2017 to September 2020, for outstanding leadership and support of Seventh-day Adventist Christian Education, August 5, 2001. I will ask our board, our current board chair, to do the presentation. I will just join in the photo opportunity. Yes, may I take off my mask? <laughs> okay. We can hold this for you in the middle of that, because I'm sloping. No, it's okay. be ahead of you, in front of you. Yes? You can put it to your side. Okay. okay. That's fine. Principal Orchid Smith, this affirmation from the Victor Dixon High School is appreciated. It was a pleasure working with you, Mrs. Smith, as principal, with the administrative, academic, and support staff, with the parents, students, guardians, graduates, and the Board of Governors. We experienced success during the time we served there. But I'd like to remind us that really, ultimate success comes and will come when we hear the well done from Jesus Christ himself. I'm going to share with you, for encouragement to all of us, 
um, the motto of my life. Who does God's work will get God's pay. Who does God's work will get God's pay. However long may seem the day, however dreary be the way, God does not pay as others pay in goods, gold or land or raiment gay, in goods that perish and decay. But God's high wisdom knows the way, and that is sure, let come what may, who does God's work will get God's pay. Thank you. We invite the graduates to stand at this time for the conferral. Mrs. Morgan, our acting vice principal, had done the presentation of the graduates at this time. You have satisfactorily completed. You have satisfactorily completed the course of studies at the Victor Dixon High School. And so by the powers vested in me by the Board of Governors, I now pronounce you graduates. And at this time, you may shift your tassels. A round of applause for the graduates at this time. All right, you may be seated and may I invite Voices in Christ at this time. I thought it might be in my name A shining legacy I thought it might be in a goal For success to follow me I thought it might be in a plan To sail across the seas But I didn't find what I really need I found it all To serve a risen King, I found the truth that I've been searching for and found it all. When I found the Lord, 
go of all my ways that I think are best for me. I'm laying down all my ideas of what I think my life should be. I'm leaving oh. everything. Let me invite Rajani and Malik to the platform at this time. Pastor Mike Test. Pastor Michael Henry, Education Director, Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh day Adventists. Dr. Vivian Quarry, Vice President, Academic Administration, Northern Caribbean University, and Board Chairman of Victor Dixon High School. Mrs. Orchid Smith, Principal of Victor Dixon High School, and Dr. Joseph Smith. Dr. Dudley Hosin, Guest Speaker, and Mrs. Hosin. Dr. Orlin Brown Earl, President, Home and School Association, and Pastor Earl. Graduating class of 2021, members of staff of the Victor Dixon High School, parents, guardians, well-wishers, ladies and gentlemen, good, good afternoon. afternoon. We are immensely honored to have been chosen to represent the graduating class of 2021. This journey has been filled with ups and for sure many downs, but in the end, through everything, God has taken us to this final point in our high school journey. This is the day we've been waiting for since forever. This is the day of awards and recognition for the painstaking efforts we have made over these five years. 
Join us as we reflect on this, our remarkable journey through the Victor Dixon High School. For most of us, it started in September 2016, when we, as naive, inexperienced boys and girls, walked through the doors of the Victor Dixon High School for the very first time, some excited, some shy, and others just going with the flow. We all formed friendships and learned how to understand each other, regardless of our backgrounds. In no time, we lost our naivety and became seasoned high schoolers, understanding the inner workings of the Victor Dixon High School while welcoming and saying goodbye to many teachers and peers along the way. Fast forwarding to third form, when we had to make our first significant decision of our high school tenure, to choose the subjects that would influence the course of our lives. Should we be in the business, the sciences, the art stream, or focus on our newly formed friendships? This proved to have been mind-wracking and a bit traumatic at first, but uh, after all, we are teenagers. But as it turned out, it wasn't that much of a big deal after all. After overcoming that major hurdle and hoping for a break, we were slammed into the thick of real work. But after a few trials and lots of errors, we managed with the help of parents, guardians, and teachers to work our way out of that rough sea and into calmer waters. Or so we thought. <laughs> to our dismay, upon entering fourth form, the workload only doubled. And then came the coronavirus in the middle of fourth form, restricting us to our homes. After getting adjusted to our more intense workload, and our country's new restrictions, we were again burdened with another massive challenge, online learning, a new experience for teachers and students alike. We had to deal with internet problems, technical difficulties, and then getting back into the groove of things after being handed a free midterm vacation, <laughs> which we definitely maximized on. These problems didn't even have the common courtesy to stop or pause while we tried to transition into our final year. In fact, they made it even harder, setting us up for the final showdown, which would test our self-discipline, perseverance, courage, and mental stability, and prove to ourselves, our teachers, our families, and everyone else that we were ready for the next stage of life. Fifth form was definitely the most challenging year, with so many new activities that would determine our next step. SBAs, the big projects that never seem to end. And the real pressure of dealing with CXE preparations. The constant postponement of SBA and exam dates, dealing with the pain of deferrals, which was a new word in our vocabulary that advanced a different experience for academic journey. And the strict discipline of studying and the CSEC exams themselves. Mm -hmm. But we took Philippians 4.13 to a different level. Indeed, we did all things through Christ, who allowed our parents, friends, and family members to motivate us and to give us strength when we felt like we couldn't carry on much longer. Notwithstanding the challenges of the school year, which has now come to an end, God has indeed carried us through. And now we can smile as young men and young women, knowing that it's all over. It's all over, guys. Well, at least this leg of the journey. You know, this speech would not be complete without highlighting some of our most memorable moments with our teachers and peers. Like those days when we couldn't bother with homework and would seek to pressure the teachers into giving us a blight just this once. Or the moments in English class when Malik and Mrs. Peart would take the English language to challenging heights. Or the highly competitive sports seasons, when the entire school would split into three houses like politics and you dare not approach another house's meeting site or else. Hmm. Or even just recently, when Mr. Newman would be walking down the hallway shouting, mask, mask, six feet apart. <laughs> this final year has already shown us that we are all capable of accomplishing our goals if we allow God to lead us and if we stay focused on our goals. Remember that no matter where you are, you can rely on your Heavenly Father. And guys, honestly, He does answer. He came through for us so many times during the academic journey here at the Victor Dixon High School. To all those who have supported us along this difficult yet memorable journey, a, a big, big thank, thank you. you. And to our fellow graduates, congratulations. congratulations. 
as we move on to the next leg of our journey, whether it be tertiary learning, working, or simply just traveling the world, let us as the graduating class of 2021 remember not to forget to Google, Google making, making strides through godliness, godliness obedience, obedience, optimism, optimism grace, grace, love, and, and endurance. endurance. Thank, Thank you. you. Gratitude, gr gratitude, gratitude is a must, says local Jamaican artist Coffee. It is with this in mind that I accept this great honor and privilege to do the vote of thanks on this August occasion. Let, let me first, first, first of all, start by giving thanks to the Almighty God for making today's occasion a resounding success. Next. I wish to thank all those who have participated in this graduation ceremony and those who worked behind the scene to make today a success. It's not working. To make today a success. Thank you, Dr. Dudley Hosin, for your most motivational and inspiring presentation today. We will take those words with us. I also want to thank our principal, teachers, administrators, and support staff for your contribution to today's activities. My heartfelt thanks to the various heads of departments for their invaluable guidance and encouragement throughout our journey at the Victor Dixon High School. I also want to thanks to all our distinguished invitees, parents, guardians, the members of the media, and finally, my fellow graduates. I leave you this inspiring quote by Martin Luther King. An individual has not started living until he rises above his confines of his individualistic concerns to the broader concerns of all humanity. Once again, I thank you all for being here. It is you who have made this occasion an unforgettable success. On behalf of the graduating class of 2021, I convey warmest gratitude. Let me add my congratulations to the graduating class of 2021. You have made it, and giving yourself a round of applause is just one of the many accolades that you will get. Give yourselves a round of applause. Please listen to the full announce announcements. I must first congratulate all who are present this afternoon, who comply with protocols that we have to be governed by in these recent times. I know it would be nice for you to have snuggled close to your loved ones, but because of the, the <laughs> restrictions, we will have to comply. So thank you so much for doing that for us. Now for the graduates, please pay attention to the following. You are asked kindly to take pictures on the outside with your families as quickly as you can, then return the gowns, the mortarboards, and the tassels to the gown rooms. Your teachers who are in charge of that area will be there to collect them. So you're not going to loiter too long or linger too long. Please return those. In order to complete your stay at Victor Dixon High School, you are reminded that you are to return all your rental books, library books if you had any. You are to honor all outstanding obligations with the business manager. Then you'll be able to collect your diplomas and certificates. But kind of give the office at least two weeks 
to get those ready for you. So after week after next, you should be able to collect those. And should you be in need of any transcripts or letters, you know the policy for the office. It's three working days to obtain such. General registration continues for new students and students who are seeking transfer. It continues in August. Those who are in Forms 1 to Forms 4, you are able to collect your report cards next week. Next week, Thursday. Please pay attention to the orientation dates. For new students, your orientation will be September 2 and 3. For Form 1 students going into Form 2, yours will be September 7, 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock. For Forms 2 going into Forms 3, your orientation date is September 7, but this time in the afternoon, 12.30 to 3 o'clock. For Forms 3 and 4 students going into Forms 4 as well as Form 5, your orientation is September 6, so that's the day before, from 8 o'clock to 11. And parents are encouraged to accompany students to the registration process. The junior class is being applauded for helping out in the, the graduation ceremony today. They did very well in ushering as well as presenting one of the items. So congratulations to you, the junior class. You are going to be the senior class of next year, next school year. Parental contracts are going to are asked to be signed especially in light of the concerns for the COVID-19 protocols, it will be nice if we can start September fresh back to school. But you will have to take special care as well as pay attention to the announcements, whether from the Ministry of Education or from our school desk to see the way forward. How could I end my announcement without inviting all those who are here to continue your investment with Victor Dixon High School, whether by sending another child or assisting with a church member or a community member to attend our, stu our school as prospective students. You can continue with our schooling here, or Christian Education Schooling at Victor Dixon High School. Thank you all for listening to the following announcements. I will allow the program to proceed as is. Let us all stand for the closing prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, we are truly thankful to you for the blessings that we have experienced through this program this afternoon. It has been long coming, Lord, five years for each one who received their certificate today. And now, Father, we have come to the end. But we know that as we separate one from the other, you will not leave our side. You will go with us wherever you would have us go. So bless each person present here, each graduate. And Lord, may your peace rest upon us all. Take us all home safely is our prayer and our asking in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask that everyone else be seated as the graduates remain standing for the recessional. Thank you very much. Yes, that's it. I'm going to... Thank you very much, Mr. Miller. And just before we leave, I'd like to say a special thanks to the Mandeville Seventh-day Adventist Church for hosting us this afternoon. Um, a round of applause. Oh, graduates, just, just sit one moment. Just one moment. Sit back. Yes. Thanks to the Mandeville SDA Church and all the members and workers who came out this afternoon to assist us. We 
are feeling very grateful and we are happy that you accommodated us. So thank you, Pastor West and your team. May I have a round of applause for the church? And usually we have a special presentation to our teachers right at the end of our graduation. And I want to quickly just make the announcements. So we have two beautiful plaques here. Victor Dixon High School Teacher of the Year Award and Runner-Up Teacher of the Year Award. And this year, our Teacher of the Year Award goes to Mrs. Benavis Crawford Reed. And the runner-up teacher is Mrs. Miss Chanel Badley. A round of applause for those persons. So it's just, we will be able to display the plaques on our wall at school. Also, we are not sure if Mrs. Morgan can get them. I'm, I think Mrs. Reed is very busy doing her um, I think Martha duties. Remember Martha, it's Mary has chosen the good path. Okay. We have Miss Badley. Is Miss, is Miss Reed here? All right, so both of their names are on this. Miss Badley and Mrs. Reed. Did you get that, Mr. Brown? And also, we have the Form Teacher of the Year category for the different grades. And this year, we have, as Form Teacher in the first form category, we have Mrs. Kenesha Rogers. For second form, we have Mrs. Althea Onoweri. In the third form, we have Ms. Chanel Badley and Ms. Harriet Foster. Um, tying there. We have a fourth form, Mrs. Terine Thomas, Miss Terine Thomas, and for fifth form, Mrs. Theresa Roberts. We have. <clears throat> they did such an extremely great job with the students online and face to face. It took much from them, and I really want to say thank you. And uh, on behalf of the school board and the administration, we want you to know that your efforts were not unnoticed. So thank you, thank you, and God bless you. Okay, okay. I would like to pay tribute to our principal, Mrs. Orchid Smith. I have watched her and her work from the first stint that I had at the Victor Dixon High School. And administration requires a lot of work. She keeps coming up with these innovative ideas. But let me give you one example. Back in 2009, when I was asked to chair first, on a Thursday, we got the final date that we were going to have accreditation on the Monday. Four days. Mrs. Smith and I wondered whether we should postpone the accreditation, but we quickly realized that we did not want to be out of accreditation. That would not be good at all. So we got to work on the Thursday. And this is what we were able to do. Finalize the report, paint the school, put in the fire escape, um, put in staff bathrooms, um, put in computers, and put in a security system 
so that the equipment would be safe. It was nothing short of a miracle. Having done accreditation in a school in New York, I pretty much knew how to do this. And sometimes it's not because you don't want to do it ahead, but sometimes the funds don't become available until at that point in time. And so we started, we worked Thursday. We worked Thursday night. We stopped before sunset on Friday. We picked up after sunset on Sabbath. We worked Sunday morning, Sunday all day, part of Sunday night, went home and came back for accreditation Monday morning. You tell me that that is not God at work because our schools need to be the best and our students need to be the best. And I'm so happy these um, graduates here, I was able to come back and serve and I'm so happy. Look, how you, don't, don't they look nice? They look lovely and when they come up and talk, they speak so well. Parents, Christian education is not a preference. It is a conviction. It is not an expense. It is an investment. Mrs. Smith, I know how hard, and maybe I don't, you know, I know how hard you work, and I can see all the ideas you come up with, and I would like to pay tribute to you. I'm not saying you're perfect. Nobody is perfect. But she loves children, she loves the Lord, and I say, job well done. God bless you. Thank you so much, Dr. Cameron. At this time, I invite the graduates to stand. We'll have the recessional, the platform party. We will lead to the back followed by the, the platform party will lead to the back, followed by the graduates, and then the parents and guardians and visitors. So we'll move to the back, then you can... Mm -hmm.